Hey, I'm Mr. Media. We're live at rehearsal for Trek the Musical, an original new parody of an American science fiction classic. Stick around. Just ahead, Kirk and Spock boldly go where no song and dance troupe has gone before. Mr. Media is recorded live before an audience of red shirts who still think they'll survive tonight's episode in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. One of the worst memories I have of my father always comes back to this. He came home from work one day in the early 1970s, saw me watching a Star Trek rerun, and shouted at me to shut it off. You've watched that a hundred times, he thundered. Get out of here. Well, it's many, many years later, and of late, my own kid has been watching hour after hour of those very same reruns. I couldn't be happier. For her, it's research. She's in the cast of Trek the Musical, an original new stage parody of the old Gene Roddenberry TV show that will have its world debut at Studio at 620, 620 First Avenue South in St. Petersburg, Florida, on February 2nd, and continue through February 5th. And you can call 727-895-6620 to order tickets. I hope you will. If you can't wait, there will also be a cold reading of the production at American Stage on Tuesday, January 17th at 7 p.m. American Stage is located in downtown St. Petersburg at 333 3rd Avenue North. And you can call 727-823-PLAY, P-L-A-Y, to reserve your tickets for that. The show, produced by Accio Actors, is based on a story by Lauren Field and Gaetano Rodriguez. The script was written by Lauren with music and lyrics by Gaetano. I haven't seen it yet, but my daughter Rachel plays Ensign Chekhov, so you know Mr. Media will be there front and center. Joining me today will be Lauren, Gaetano, and several members of the Trek the Musical cast to preview the show. And Lauren Field, welcome to Mr. Media. Hi. Hi. So, Lauren, I'm thinking that you're a pretty brave woman uh, to undertake a parody of Star Trek, of all things. Uh, I mean, in case you hadn't heard, these Trekkies can be very vicious when it comes to uh, their beloved Starfleet. Uh, wouldn't it have been safer to do, I don't know, a Twilight parody instead? They are actually doing a Twilight parody, I've heard recently, uh, just a couple days ago. Um, you know... Well, no, I don't think it would have been more an, an easier feat to do a Twilight parody because I, I think fangirls are, are a little more vicious than Trekkies. Uh, everyone underestimates the fangirls. But um, honestly, I think Trekkies are, are they, they can be very, very passionate. Let's say that. But that's also the good thing about them because they, they love this show that's, if you think about it, it's set in the future and it's all these people, they're all so different, not just different skin color or different orientation, they're, they're a different race, religion, and, and they all accept each other, for the most part. Um, they're all on the same ship together, and back then, you know, in, in, the, in the 60s, that was a huge thing to be doing, to be showing certain relationships on the show, and so I think that Trekkies are some of the most accepting people out there, hmm. because they're so passionate about a show like this. So what's the point of view of, this, of Trek the Musical? Is it reverent? Is it irreverent? The point of view of Trek the Musical is, it's just, it's, it's a musical about, it's two acts of everything people joke about Star Trek, even the people who love Star Trek. It's, it's we get to see them go to Starfleet Academy, which is not something we saw in the original series, um, that we kind of took as a spoof and a nod towards the J.J. Abrams reboot. And um, that's the first act, and then the second act, they're finally on the bridge. So it only takes an intermission for Kirk to get his, get his stripes. <laughs> Uh, are there any uh, Klingon sacred cows? No, no, but I, I, I guarantee you, you will see a few Orion slave girls, maybe, and some Andorians. Oh, the blue skinned. The blue skinned Andorians. Now, could you uh, maybe offer us a, a line from the show out of context that would kind of give us a taste <laughs> of. Uh... There are a lot of. Damn it, Jims, I'm a doctor's. That's their damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor. There are a lot of those. Damn it, Jims. Um, and, of course, we tried We tried to stick to each character. We, we took each character, everything they would say, and we, we cranked the volume up on them. So um, they, they're a little more ridiculous than on the original show as a spoof, you know, would have characters being. But, yes, a lot of damn it, Jims. A lot of damn it, Jims. And the, the show is... Uh 
classic Trek as opposed to Next Generation or yes. anything else? Yeah, it's, it's, it's classic Star Trek, the original series. Both Gaetano and I are huge fans of the original series, and that was the only option, I think, for us. We didn't even consider another, another version of Star Trek. Now, most of the cast is in their teens or early 20s. Uh, did they all know Star Trek? Um, surprisingly, a lot of them did. Um, we didn't have the the luxury of finding a whole cast that was just, you know, interested in, not just interested in Star Trek, but knew a lot about Star Trek. And the second they heard that we were just starting to write a musical, a lot of them were like, I have all the DVDs now and I'm watching them and, and now I know all about this. And when they came in, they were they were Trekkies reborn. They were they were Trekkies. So I'm very proud of them. I feel like we've we've corrupted them a bit, but <laughs> now is your Kirk uh, more William Shatner or Chris Pine? Oh way more William Shatner. This is the original series and, and we want to tip our hat to Mr. Shatner. It's definitely way more William Shatner. <laughs> are there are there any references to the JJ Abrams version? Um, there are a couple. There, you'll, you'll see if you if you pay attention. There are a couple uh, references to the J.J. Abrams version. We took a lot of a lot of material to spoof from the original series, um, but we made it a show to where you don't have to be a Trekkie to watch it and to like it. But at the same time, there are a lot of things in there that only Trekkies will be able to go aha. <laughs> we get it. We get it. But a lot of people who have just seen the J.J. Abrams reboot, they'll be able to enjoy it as well. Were there many lines that uh, seemed to work on paper as you were writing this that you, you, had to, you had to change as soon as you started hearing them live? Um, we did actually, when we were writing it, um, the two of us decided that we wanted constant table readings of the script to make sure that it, was, it, was, it worked and it, and it fit with the characters and the people who were, who were reading for them. And so we would have maybe one a month. We would have one table reading. We'd bring whatever we had, whatever music and script we had, and we'd, we'd test it out on the actors. And we hadn't even cast yet. We just had a different person reading each time. And um, there, were, there were some moments where, you know, we just sat there and we went, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, oh, scratch that. And it, it's nothing personal. I mean, I would hand him over the script, and we would take out, like, red pens, and we would just make mincemeat of it, you know. But um, there are some moments where it just worked. It just, because we knew who we were writing for. Hmm. Um, tell me about your lead actors. Hmm. How do you find someone to play Spock and Kirk and Bones? Um, Bones was easy to cast because um, we were in a table reading, the first table reading we ever did, and the first line uh, out of any of the main characters is Bones. And, um, and Devin read for Bones that day, and he all he said was, um, Dr. Leonard McCoy reporting, and the two of us, I remember, we just snapped our heads up, and we went, that's him. It, he looks like him. He sounds like him. There was no other person that, probably, that, that could have played that. Um, Spock, Jacob Zidane walked in, and that was it. <laughs> he came in, he's, and he said, my name is Jacob Zidane, and when we heard that voice, we all went, yes, you are Jacob Zidane, aren't you? You're Spock. So it was very easy to cast those two roles. They were, they were no-brainers. No Kirk. 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 We had we actually had two auditions for Kirk because we needed to find the right guy, and we had a lot of guys audition for Kirk. And I've worked with Jeremy Moransky before. I, I worked with him in theater before in high school, and I remember going into the second audition, going, you know, he'd be perfect for it. We need to find a Kirk. So I called him and I said, if you audition, I guarantee you, you will probably get it. Just, just come in and sing for them. I was not involved in the casting of Kirk at that point at all because it was a little biased. He's a really good friend of mine. And he came in and, and sang, and that was it. It was, an, it was a no-brainer with him. He was perfect. He was absolutely perfect. Right. Well, hello. Hardy at 12 o'clock. Set an intercept course. Full speed ahead. Who is that? My name is Jeremy Moransky, and I play Captain James Tiberius Kirk. I can't do it, Captain! I just don't! I'm Joe Southall, and I play Montgomery Scott. Uh, I don't know about this, Jim. Damn man, I'm a doctor, I'm not a red shirt. Hi, I'm Devin Mott, and I play Dr. Leonard McCoy. Afro shiny, look at my hiney. I mean, the Brooks, and I play Ahura. Oh my. I'm Justin Gonzalez, and I play Sulu. You smell like sunshine and Oreo cookies! My name is Alicia Carrillo, and I play Janice Rand. Joining Lauren now is uh, Gaetano Rodriguez, who wrote the music and lyrics for Trek and also co-wrote the story. 
Um, Gaetano, the, uh, the Star Trek theme is uh, one of the, the, the most well-known and beloved theme songs of all time. But Star Trek has produced, I think, very little other music of note in 40 years. I wonder, does that make your job easier or harder? Um, I think it definitely makes it a lot easier because I don't. Uh, when you're writing music for it, you don't have to go, oh, maybe I need to take a little bit of this song and this song and work it in. And you get to just start from scratch and do whatever you want. Did you start with the lyrics or the music? I think I always started with each song had had the kind of style I wanted it in, in my mind. But uh, And then I would build the lyrics around that. So it, it, some songs start with a melody, some start with, with a few lines, and it's really different every single time. And what kind of music are we talking about? What, what is this going to sound like? Uh, some songs are just straightforward rock songs. Some of them uh, have more of like a soul, like funky vibe. Some of them are very proper, and uh, and and some of them are even folky. Um, a little bit of a, 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 a country, a country uh, twang to it. Is there a lot of humor in the music as well as the, the production? Oh yeah, big time. It's all tongue in cheek. It's all just you know what when you sing a song you can say whatever you want. You could you could be as you could be as silly as you want, and uh, yeah, there's it's it's not to be taken too seriously. Does everyone in the cast break into song? I mean, we heard Kirk and Spock and Bones. And mostly, mostly the songs are, are the leads, and then we've got we've got a few choruses and in some of the songs where everybody just busts in and goes crazy. The only person who is not totally sure about the singing is Spock. Yes. He doesn't understand it. It's way too emotional for him. Does, does he sing, you know, once every seven years? or? <laughs> Pond for the musical. Well, we didn't have a harp for him to play, so I don't think he'll be singing any songs. No. no. <laughs> what would be an example of, of a point at which the cast breaks into song? Um, well, in the opening number. Everybody is, is excited to go to Starfleet and... Dancing just, on the shuttle crew. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're just singing <laughs> it out. And what, uh, I mean... How do you how did you two do this together? I know you did the story together, so kind of take us to back to. I mean, were you just chatting about it? Did did you have this notion you really want to do this? Was it just an odd thought? How did this come about? Um, <laughs> Lauren, it was originally Lauren. It was, it was incepted by Lauren. It was I I I've always wanted to do an, an original musical because I've been doing musicals since I was like ten years old, and 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 I thought I really want to do an original musical. And we've got all these amazing actors, and. I, I don't know. I guess I've always loved Star Trek and I've always loved musicals. And I thought they were gonna they were gonna collide in my brain at, at one point, <laughs> you know. And I I thought of it one night and I messaged Gaetano and I said, "Listen, he's probably gonna think I'm really weird and I don't know what I don't know if he's gonna want to be my friend after this, but we'll, we'll just see." So I messaged him my idea, and not five minutes later, I don't get any text back. I don't get any any kind any wording at all. All I get is a picture of him in his Kirk shirt going like this. In front of the camera with this huge grin on his face. It's a no-brainer decision. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, I think that means yes. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, on the first promotional piece I saw for this, I guess that most people did was Gaetano in costume. Yes. Shooting his phaser, <laughs> rolling around behind the couch. Oh yeah. He was a little way too, way too, way too excited <laughs> to do that. I was that. ready. <laughs> and, and where do you want this to go? I mean, you, we should explain. I mean, you're doing this first as a local production here in mm -hmm. the St. Petersburg area. Um, are you hoping this is something you can take beyond this? I suspect you are. Um, we are filming it professionally so that we can put it on YouTube. Uh, we have a lot of people who cannot make it to the show who have been asking, and yes, we will be putting it on YouTube. A really awesome version of it on YouTube. So we're very excited about that. And you must be thinking beyond YouTube, though. <laughs> we have um, hopes and dreams. <laughs> I'm a bit of a realist. He's, we, we're both realists. Yeah. Um, we're, I think we're just more... I don't know. I, maybe I focused on making it happen first. Yes, we're, that's what we're, we're focused about the live show. Yeah. We're just it's it's getting very close to the live show, and we actually have posters in there for this for the reading. And I walked up to it, and it just felt it. We both looked like, at it oh, going, "This is really going to happen." It's yeah, <laughs> wait a second, because it it feels like just yesterday, in March, when we were when we started writing it, yeah. and now we're just kind of like, "Wait a second. <laughs> This is actually happening. I would, I would love for it to hit YouTube and for it to get, you know, a bunch of plays and for Trekkies to, you know, tell each other about it. And, and enjoy it. And, you know, download the soundtrack and maybe we could do it elsewhere. But, you know what, one step at a time, 
and let's just see where it goes. Yeah, we just we want it. We want the Trekkies to enjoy it. So putting it on YouTube is a way for them to watch yeah. it wherever they are because there's Trekkies all over the world. So um, it's 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 made by Trekkies for Trekkies. Yes. <laughs> Basically. Seems like it'd be a natural to go and perform at uh, some Trek conventions, right? some comic book shows. Right. We have a few. Awesome. We have a few uh, people who perform in, in the cast who perform at those conventions who have said, you know, we want to set up panels. We want to do this for you, and we're just kind of sitting here going, wait, did we perform it already? Yeah. <laughs> so. It's a little. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand not wanting to get ahead of yourselves, but yeah. you're young. You have hopes and dreams. Yes, I mean, come on. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Gaetano, would you mind maybe giving uh, an impromptu uh, lyric, just a few lines? Could you sing a little something? <laughs> well, which would you rather be, a lame earthling tragedy, or a star-crossing, alien-talking, Starfleet officer? <laughs> hopping galaxies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We should take this on the road. Yes, <laughs> acapella version. And the last question: How did, in terms of the actual writing? Now I understand you guys came up with the story together. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, you wrote the script. Yes. Katana, you wrote the music and lyrics. Yep. You obviously had to work together on this. How, yeah. had, had you guys worked together on something like this before? Never. We've never written together like. Mm -mm. We've never. This Not is the first time. 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 No. This is. The, we've known each other for for a couple years before this, but we've never written together or anything right. like that. And he's never done a musical before. Nope. So nope. it was really fun to to get to do this together. Yeah. And I understand there have been some ups and downs during the course of this. Maybe some. Music lost here and there, some technical yes. issues. We, uh, we, as at, when I write, I also record because I have a recording set up at my house. I have all of his demos. Yes. Oh. He would he would record the song. Yeah. I have an idea for this song. He would record the song and then he would just send it over to me. So I yeah. have like the full version of Trek just starring Gaetano. Yeah, right. It was hilarious. And um, and so uh, when we were recording the uh, the soundtrack, um, we had done like just a rough rough mix just so that everybody could hear it and um, uh, a couple of the voices were missing it was just me and my scratch vocal in there and then my computer crashed and my backup crashed and it just was okay that was uh, you know about uh, 300 hours worth of work <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do yeah well, wow. there's always obstacles when you're when you're doing, especially when you're doing an original production. Yes. You're starting everything from scratch, yeah. so you just gotta kind of keep going and yeah. and uh, work through. I'm, the... I'm really glad we did have that rough mix, so we do have something for people to have yes. if they really want to hear the, uh, if they really want to take home the music. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, this will be the last question. Uh, when you get this posted on YouTube, obviously it's going to be very easy for someone to get this in the hands of some of the cast members, the actual. Oh, God. Trek cast members. Oh, please. Oh, God. Yes. What would you, what would you like to say to them about about how you're taking care of their characters and and, and you know, your 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 thoughts to them. Do you want to take that one first? Well, I think it needs to be said that we're doing this out of love. Yes. This is a this is a work of love. We we love we these characters. We are Trekkies. We 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 do see we do they are sacred to us. Yes. And that is why we mock them. Yes. When we when we when we like something or we love yes. something or someone, we make fun of it yes. in in jest in in all in good fun. That's in how we work. Jest. Yes, that's how right. we work. That's that's our sense of humor. And so, if anyone from the cast of of any Star Trek anything sees this, they should know that that we kept the Trekkies in mind the entire time we were writing this. Every time we would write something, I would sit there and I would think to myself. Okay, how would how would the Trekkies take this? And then I would ask him because he is a fellow Trekkie, and and he would go yes or no, yes do that, no don't do that at all, <laughs> you know. So we we've kept them in mind the entire time, the entire time. Yeah. The Accio Actors original stage parody Trek the Musical will have its world debut at the studio at six twenty. 620 First Avenue South in St. Petersburg, Florida, on February 2nd and continue through February 5th. You can call 727-895-6620 or visit the website, studio620.org, to order tickets. If you can't wait, there will also be a cold reading of the production at American Stage on Tuesday, January 17th at 7 p.m. American Stage is located in downtown St. Petersburg at 333 3rd Avenue North. You can call 
P-L-A-Y, that's 727-823-PLAY, or visit their website, americanstage.org, to reserve your tickets. To find Accio Actors, you can go to their Facebook page. Just search Accio, A-C-C-I-O, Actors. Lauren Field and Gaetano Rodriguez and all the cast, thank you so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. For more original interviews, surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. If you've enjoyed today's show, subscribe for free to Mr. Media via email, RSS, or iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Another good idea? Download our new free Mr. Media mobile app in the Android market. And you can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many parts of the Internet. Show your support of Mr. Media by supporting our sponsors, including Audible. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. We're also supported by thepartyauthority.us. Call DJ Ira for all your party entertainment needs nationwide at 1-800-DIAL-DJs or visit their website, thepartyauthority.us. If you've got an idea for a guest, a comment on today's show, or would like to advertise on Mr. Media Radio, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. You can also call our 24-hour listener line at 1-727-498-4711. Some messages may be used in an upcoming show. And unless you live next door to Mr. Media, there may be a toll charge. You can also follow Mr. Media on Facebook, Twitter, or our new YouTube and Vimeo video channels. Thanks so much for joining us today. I always appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody. This is Bob Andelman from Mr. Media. First of all, I want to thank you for years of support uh, listening to the show. We're starting our sixth year. It's hard to believe our sixth year uh, as 2012 starts and heading towards our 1,000th online podcast, uh, audio and video. It's uh, pretty amazing, <laughs> frankly. Uh, I remember starting it several years ago thinking, this will never last. And podcast, that's as stupid a word as blogging. But here we are, <laughs> starting our sixth year and heading up to a thousand interviews. And I want to thank everybody for uh, listening and supporting the show. I also want to tell you that... Uh, you know, one of the things that's been very helpful for this show is Stitcher Radio. Yes, this is sort of a commercial. Now, there are millions of smartphone apps in the world, but I only use one several times a day, Stitcher Radio. I build my own radio station to listen to broadcast and online shows when I want and in the order I want. CNN News Update, Onion Radio News, WTF with Mark Marin, MSNBC's Morning Joe, Studio 60, the TechCrunch headlines, and of course, Mr. Media. It's free. It works on iPhone, Android, BlackBerry, Palm Pre, and much more. And you can get it for free for yourself. Try it out. I guarantee you're going to love it. Stitcher.com slash MR Media. That's Stitcher.com slash Mr. Media. You're going to love it. And thanks again for supporting the show. I, I don't know about this, Jim. Damn it, man, I'm a doctor, not a red shirt. I'm Devin Mott, and I play... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck all of you! <laughs> Sorry, that was good. God, uh, fuck all, right. all of you. <laughs> Did you like the head? <laughs> all right. <laughs> I wanted to do... Do I have to redo it again? Yes. Yeah. yeah. God...